Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Dad Doing Dad Things, Episode 3. This one's a little different. I'm not actually going to be doing any home repair or anything, but instead, if you can see back here, I've got some cool ingredients to be making some special burgers. And I figure, why not take you along? So let me flip this camera around and I'll show you what we're gonna be working with here. You can see how I make burgers for our family. Okay, so first we've got our ground round. So we're going with some 8515 uh, ground beef. We got some USDA choice, so that should end up making for some good burgers. Hey, bud, Hi. you come over to see what I was doing? Yep. Okay, it we've got. It smells good. Well, I don't. I, I mean, you're probably smelling the cupcakes that you and mom made. Uh, we ended up getting some hickory bacon, as well as some Meyer thick slice pepper bacon. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a half and half, to where when we make the burgers, we're going to take about half of the hickory bacon and we're gonna dice it up nice and good. We're gonna mix that in with the burger and then we're gonna do some other ones that have half of this bacon mixed into them. So that's gonna be the main uh, portion of the burger, but we've also got some other specialties up here that we ended up picking up. And we're gonna take these, we're gonna dice them into small blocks and we're gonna mix those in with the burger as well. So to start with, one of the cheeses we got, and we're going to have to taste these first to make sure that they um, are going to taste good as a part of a burger because I haven't had all these before. But we've got a, a Gouda that's a smoked with apple and hardwood. We've got a cheddar here that says that it's nutty, a lot like Parmesan. So that was kind of cool. We've got a uh, Manchego cheese, which is made from sheep's milk. We have a, oops, other side. We have a black truffle uh, cheddar. We've got a ghost pepper Colby Jack cheese. And then this one, which I know that we're not gonna be uh, cutting up in the burger, uh, but it's a uh, 1000 day aged Gouda. So this is just gonna be for our uh, meat and uh, cheese platter that we're gonna do. So uh, step number one, which is the most important step, is gonna be washing your hands. So let's go over here and do that. Nice and clean. And dry them off. Back to the burgers. Okay, so first parts first. We gotta get into this here package. Go ahead and use a knife. We're just gonna cut this open. And what we're gonna need is one good mixing bowl. Okay, so we've got our nice big old mixing bowl here. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get about half this meat. And we're I gonna go ahead and put which it in one there. to use. Yeah, so Scott was a big helper. He helped pick out which bowl we were gonna use. So we've got the meat in here. We're just gonna kind of make sure it's nice and pulled apart. Yep, that's the first thing. Yep, that's the first thing. Number two, Scott, do you wanna be a big helper and give me the chopping board out of there? So next, we're gonna take, and we're gonna use roughly about half of this bacon, I think. Uh, Cause we wanna be able to take some and top our burger with it. So we get half of her down here. We're gonna go ahead and get a big knife and we're just gonna start cutting. Let's see if we can't get a, the fatty portions of this. What now? Cut a little tough. What now, Dad? Well, now we're cutting up this meat. What now, Cut the bacon, then we will see. So I am by no means a professional chef. 
Uh, and therefore, I cut things entirely wrong, I am sure. But one thing I know that I've seen uh, from a pro experience watching uh, cooking videos is when you cut, you keep your knuckles forward, not your fingers forward. That way you can't cut yourself. So when you're going down, uh, you can run the blade down the knuckle, uh, the side of the blade, and then you don't have to worry about accidentally cutting your finger. So now what we're going to do, we're going to set the knife to the side. We're going to take this bacon and mix it right in with our ground beef. All right. Let's take a quick look at that. Look what we have there. A nice blend of bacon and burger. Okay. Remember, we got the other half over here, and we're going to be doing the same thing afterwards with this hickory bacon. Now that we got this done, what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and wash my hands again, because next, we're going to cut open some of these cheeses and take a taste to try and find what kind of cheese we want to decorate this burger with. Okay, folks, so as you can see, I've swapped our cutting board with a new clean cutting board. We also have nice clean hands. And I got a separate knife, a little paring knife is what I'm gonna use here. And we're gonna go ahead and get into some of these. Next one we're gonna try is this ghost pepper. And this one, Scott, I'm gonna to have to completely try first. Why? Because you might not be able to eat this one. Why? Because it's made with ghost pepper, which is super duper hot. And so I don't know how hot this is gonna be. This might be too hot for dad. Oh yeah. Woo. That is, woo, ghost pepper. <laughs> Scott, I think you're going to pass on that one. Yep. Not going on the burger. It looks gross too. <clears throat> and it looks woo. spicy and hot. We're going to take a quick pause here after that one. And get a slight glass of milk. Woo. That one was... I think we're going to do the black cheddar truffle and the smoked gouda, and then we're going to do some without. Some little chunks here. We're going to take a pretty good amount um, that's probably the... of the gouda. Oh. And we're going to take a pretty good amount of this other one, and then what we're going to do is cut them. Can you watch out, Scott? Ah! Watch your head. So I'm going to try and get them into roughly square blocks that we can end up getting inside of the burger. Pretty good chunks of gouda, pretty good chunks of the white cheddar. We're going to move the rest of the cheese out of the way. Next step, cheese to the side. Our cutting board back out front. What we're going to do is we're going to take about a third of this mixture, I think. So you can kind of ball it up a little bit. We're going to put it down. We're going to verify. We're going to take another little ball chunk, put it down next to it, grab the next one, put it down. We've got roughly three even sized piles here. So we're going to take one and we're going to put it back in because that one is going to be for our plain version of the burger. And then these ones here, I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to get probably three burgers out of this. Let's see what we got. Nah, we can get four burgers. So it'll be rough burger size, so I like to kind of flatten it out a little bit with my fingers. Just give it a little bit of a round curve. And put the other chunk back in there. Flatten it with your hands, the palm of your hands. And then just cup your hand and kind of go around the side. We need a little bit more on this one. And we got four pretty decent burgers here. Okay, so this is going to be one of our kinds of cheese. So I'm going to reach over here. And I'm going to get our chunks of cheese. And I am going to kind of space them out and push them down. I think about four of these in the burger is probably going to be pretty good. Maybe we'll get one more in there so you can kind of see 
we've got our meat around with our cheese chunks. We're gonna go ahead and do one more in the center. Get a nice big one in this, right? And then we're just gonna fold the burger kind of over top of it to try and encase the cheese in the middle so that all that nice gooey cheese when it melts is just inside of the burger. Okay. There we go. There you have it. We've got one nice burger done of variety smoked Gouda. So we'll do the same thing with the other. This is the white cheddar. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and four. Four is probably pretty good on this one. This one was a little stronger flavor to it. So we're going to go ahead and take, and again, we're just folding that meat right over top of the cheese so you can't see it. Cut a piece there a little bit big. I'm going to turn it inside the burger. Okay. There you go. I'll pat it down again. Go ahead and do a nice little cup around the edge. And now you've got another burger. This is where we're going to go ahead and go into time lapse mode while I finish making these two variety of burger. have it we have some hickory bacon stuffed burgers with smoked gouda and some black truffle cheddar and then we have some pepper thick slice bacon with smoked gouda and black truffle cheddar over here we've got some that are just the one kind of bacon uh, we did end up making a couple of these that are just completely plain burgers uh, the next thing we have to do uh, which we'll go ahead and do right now we are gonna go ahead and slap some salt and pepper over the top of these things. And then once that's done, we're gonna hit the grill. Okay, folks, so normally I would have some more fresh ground pepper, but we're out of that right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use some uh, pure ground pepper. And we're just hitting the tops of each of them. Need a little bit of pepper on our burgers. Okay, and then instead of just salt, I like to use garlic salt because it tastes yummy. Uh, and this one here also has some parsley in there as well, which is kind of nice. So again, nice, pretty strong dosing. Got to keep those vampires away, people. Usually I'll take the seasonings out with me as well uh, and go ahead and after I flip them and I'll hit the other sides as well um, once we uh, get there. But right now we're ready for grill time so we're going to go prep the grill. There's one last important step that I forgot to mention before I stopped to the last clip. We got Scott over here. But that was to clean off our area. So it just took me about uh, a minute, maybe two minutes tops. We rinsed off the uh, cutting boards what and about mixing hands? bowl. Yep, the, the hands were the first thing after I got done with it. Anytime you're done touching food or before you touch food, you should be washing your hands. Or Isn't, in the middle of it. Sometimes in the middle we do it as well. So uh, I'm leaving the cheese out specifically so that uh, we can cut that up for our cheese tray. The meats are ready to go. You, as you can see, the counter, at least this side of it, it's all nice and cleaned up. We got a couple dishes to do, but that'll happen at the end. So out to the grill we go. 
All right, folks, we're out at the grill. Uh, I don't have any real exact science of what I do here. I pretty much just slap them on. I like to warm the grill up first. Uh, I throw them on, and then I just kind of watch them. So I don't have any real words of wisdom. I'm not a good enough chef to know, hey, 350 degrees, uh, five minutes both sides, or whatever the case is. I just watch them and um, make sure it's kind of browned on the one side. Again, I just I like my burgers fully cooked, but not overcooked. I don't like them burnt. So I'm just going to set up a time lapse and hopefully you guys enjoy watching the burgers roast. see here that we have the finished burgers we're just waiting up another moment here for the grilled bacon to finish and not that you can see it but our buns to get nice and toasted so once we get a complete burger we will go ahead and show you what we're working with here but I'm really happy with the way these things turned out you see that cheese just oozing out of them and those nice crispy pieces of bacon Kind of soaked in there so we'll show you a completed version once it's all together all right folks and this here is the finished product we have one of the hickory uh, bacon burgers with the white cheddar black truffle cheese